Hi, I'm Maria May from The Casting On Couch and welcome to my four-part series on how to create this beautiful Celtic hoodie. It's a full and complete step-by-step guide. See the description for further details and for the written instructions that go with this video series. Welcome to part three. In part three, we use a provisional cast on to create a back panel that morphs in with our sleeves. Both sleeves and back panel are now worked together all in one piece and we work back and forth rather than in rounds. This project is fully fashioned, meaning you take care of all the shaping, i.e. the increasing and the decreasing within the knitting. There is no sewing. So I can't wait to show you this. Let's begin. Using a crochet hook and some waste yarn, I've created a series of chain stitches. I've created 48 chains, so that's eight more than I need as I like to have a little bit of excess to either end. And I always mark the end which I later want to unravel. I just find that makes life a little bit easier. So I've picked up 40 stitches through the spine of these crochet stitches here. Um, I'll just do a quick demonstration. So if you turn the chain stitch to the wrong side and then with your needle go into the spine and bring your yarn around and pull through, that's how we pick up the stitches. So I've got 40 of these and I'm going to incorporate them with the sleeves. So I've got three stitches there which I don't need so I'm just going to remove those. So that's the idea of a provisional cast on. So get your provisional cast on stitches, we've got 40 remember there, and then this is the right sleeve. We ended by slipping one if you remember. What I want you to do is slip that stitch over onto the provisional cast on needle so that we can knit two together. So I'm just going to take the yarn to the back and just very carefully we're going to knit those two stitches together and we're going to carry on knitting the stitches from the provisional cast on and we're going to knit all the way to the end leaving the very last stitch unworked because again we are going to work that stitch in with the left panel so I'm going to knit after knitting two together, I'm going to be knitting 38 stitches. 30, 40, 38 so that leaves me with one stitch and that's correct and now I can get the left sleeve so here's my left sleeve I've got three stitches here and this first stitch I'm going to decrease in now I've had to put it onto a, a different circular needle as I ran out of needles so I'm going to slip the stitch from the provisional cast on over onto the left needle so that I can knit these two stitches together. And let's tighten this up a little bit. And then I'm just going to carry on what would be um, around 16, wouldn't it? So I'm just going to carry on with the balance of the pattern. So I would be purling two. And then knitting four, one, two, three, four, and then purling these stitches here, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And then we've got some four stitch right crosses to do here. So I'm just going to use this 
little skinny needle here to do the cabling. So we're going to slip two stitches onto a holder and place them to the back. And then knit two. And then place the stitches back onto the left needle and knit those. Next, purl two. And again, four stitch right cross. So take those two stitches and place them to the back of the work. Knit to the next two stitches. And then slip those two stitches back onto the left needle and knit those. And next, purl two. And again, four stitch right cross here. And then we've got five, one, two, three, four, five purl stitches. And then we knit four. And then purl four at the end. One, two, three, four. So that's the sleeves now incorporated in with the back panel. And we are now going to work the main Celtic repeat pattern back and forth this time. So this will be row one of the back panel. So a wrong side row, we're going to knit two to begin with. And we are then going to pick up this little bar that lies in between the two stitches. And then I want you to bring the yarn to the front and I want you to pull through the back of it and create a new stitch. like so. Take the yarn to the back and knit two. And from here on in we are maintaining the flow of the pattern so we're going to purl four Then we're going to knit five. And if you notice, this set of instructions is starred, meaning that it's going to be repeated on the opposite side. And then we can carry on and purl four. One, two, three, four. I'm just going to single knot that for now and darn that in later on. And now we have two sets of this. So after knitting two, we're going to repeat that for a second set. So purl four, And 
knit two. Purl four again, one, two, three, four. Knit five, one, two, three, four, five. And then purl four. And knit two and then we come to our purl section so if you notice if we just do a quick look in between this cable here we're purling two and then breaking into a, a knit wise section for the back so ensuring the works not twisted we're going to purl all the way along here so I am purling all the way across here. You should have 40 stitches. And we want to make sure it's not twisted. And this will get obviously a bit easier as the work develops. There'll be less danger of it twisting. So purl to the opposite side. I'm not going to show you the entire purl section, but just make sure that you have 40 purl stitches at this point. So that's my 40th purl stitch. And now I'm going to knit two and purl four. Now I want you to repeat that little section that's starred. Now what I thought I'd do is show you in full so that you can see how it works. So we're repeating those starred instructions because it's exactly the same. So knit five, one, two, three, four, five. And next, purl four and knit two. And repeat that for a second set, that little sequence. So purl four, knit two. Purl four and knit five. And then we're going to end by purling four, one, two, three and then I want you to knit two and then we're going to increase a stitch just as we did at the beginning so I'm going to pull up the strand that lies in between the two sets of stitches here and then I'm bringing the yarn to the front because I'm going to purl into the back of it so I'm making one purl wise and then ending by knitting two so that's row one and now if we turn the work we can work a right side row so the celtic pattern sequence will be continued and basically you have a knit 40 section in between and you have fewer purl stitches where the join is between the celtic panel and the set of knit stitches. The other little difference is the beginning. We're now creating a little decorative edging because that will be the finished edge of the work. Row two. 
Now we're going to knit two. We've got a garter stitch edge on the first two stitches and the last two stitches. And next I want you to slip one and then purl two. And next we're going to do a four stitch left cross. So slip two onto the cable needle and hold in the front. Knit two from the left needle. Slip your stitches back over onto the left needle and knit those. And then what you want to do next is complete row two of the Celtic cable. So I'm not going to demonstrate that as I've done that so many times already. I'm going to show you what happens here and across the back. So I've completed row two of the Celtic cable and I'm now going to do a four stitch right cross. So take two stitches and place them on the cable needle and hold at the back and then knit two from the left needle and slip those stitches back over onto the left needle and knit those. And then we're going to purl two and I want you to knit across after that to the opposite side. So purl two and knit these 40 stitches. So I'm at the end of my little knit stitch panel. I've got 40 knit stitches and we then purl two and on this cable we're doing a four stitch left cross. So slip two and hold in the front and then knit two and place these stitches on the left needle and knit those. So what's nice about that is that you'll see as it, the work develops You've got a, a mirroring of the cable on the left side to the right. Look, can you see they're kind of twisting away from each other? So now I want you to complete row two of the Celtic cable, which will bring me to this point, and then I'll show you how this row ends. So here's the last nine stitches we want to slip two and hold at the back to do a four stitch right cross here. And then we are going to purl two and then yarn to the back, slip one and knit two at the end. So that's row two. So I've jumped ahead a bit, but you can see that this is a knit wise inserted back panel. And then we've got our Celtic repeat on either side of that and our new selvage edge. And I want to talk about the selvages because row three, to achieve the selvage edges, uh, what you have to bear in mind is that on every wrong side row, you would begin by knitting two, purling one, and knitting two, and then you would continue the repeat, so you'd have to work the reverse of the Celtic cable and make sure that you maintain the pattern there. Then you would purl across the back. Again, another Celtic repeat here where you work the wrong side, and you finally get to the opposite selvage, where here you would knit two, purl one and knit two to achieve the selvage edge. 
and then on the right side the selvage is achieved by knitting two and then slipping one and you slip one um, knit wise and that achieves this nice sort of slightly twisted slip stitch that decorates the edge here and so you would knit two, slip one knit wise, purl two, carry on in pattern um, and then when you get to the last five stitches you would purl two, slip one knit wise and knit two. So I want you to bear in mind that the selvages need to be maintained, the Celtic cable pattern repeat needs to be maintained bearing in mind you're working to and fro and the knit the knit section at the back is straightforward, it's just um, stockinette stitch. So with all that in mind, continue the main Celtic pattern for rows 3 to 16, finishing the 5th Celtic repeat. And then work the 6th Celtic repeat from rows 1 to 7. On row 8, we begin the back raglan shaping. And as you can see here, I've skipped ahead so that I can show you the overall impression of what we're aiming for. From row 8 we're going to be decreasing up to a point where we're only left with 10 stitches across this knitted back panel. We're going to do a slip slip knit that decreases one stitch with a left lean. Before I do that I'm going to knit my first stitch as the decrease occurs on the second stitch. And now in order to do a slip slip knit, you want to slip one knit wise, slip a second stitch knit wise, and then with the tip of the left needle, go into the fronts of those two stitches and knit them together. And that's a slip slip knit. And that's what I've done on this back panel here to get that decorative shaping. Let's knit two together. Now I've worked knitwise to the last three stitches of this little back panel and I'm now ready to knit two together to create the raglan shaping. With your right needle go into the second stitch followed by the first stitch. So you're going to be knitting two stitches at the same time. So ensure the yarn is to the back of the work and knit those two stitches together. If we knit the last stitch, this gives the appearance of two stitches traveling over the knitting in um, the direction of the right. Use the decrease shown for rows 10, 12, 14 and 16 of the 6th Celtic repeat. Now I'm going to show you the double decreases that will apply to rows 2, 4 and 6 of the 7th Celtic repeat. I'm going to begin by knitting one and then I'm going to do an SK2P. So I'm going to slip one and then I'm going to knit two together and then I'm going to pass this second stitch over the stitches that you worked together and that forms an SK2P. It decreases two stitches with a left lean. And I've got four stitches, four knit stitches remaining. What we're going to do now is work three stitches together. So enter into the third stitch on the left needle, followed by the second, and then the first. So we're working all those three stitches together Bring the yarn in between the needles and pull through a loop. So that's knitting three together. And next, knit one. So that knit three together creates a right leaning decrease and we have decreased two stitches 
there. So across this whole panel we've lost four stitches. This is now row 7 and note that it's a wrong side row and we will be decreasing across this back panel and we'll be losing a total of two stitches. So I have worked up to the pearl wise section of the back panel and this is how we are going to decrease. So we begin by purling one and then purl two together. So notice I've gone through two stitches there on the left needle and then with the yarn in front I've purled those together. Now purl across to the last three stitches of the purl wise back panel. And we've got three purl stitches remaining and the next decrease I'm going to purl two through the back of the loop. And what that means is you enter into the second stitch from the back. So I don't know if you can see that there. I've got the second stitch followed by the first through the back, like so. And then I'm going to purl those together. So that's a purl two together through the back loop and then I'm ending this purl section by purling one. Now row eight has a double decrease just as rows two, four and six. So this is row nine, it's a wrong side row and I've worked to the purl stitch section of the back and this is how I've worked the decreases. So we begin by purling one and then purl two together. So notice I've gone through two stitches there on the left needle and then with the yarn in front I've purled those together. And now I'm going to purl six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we've got three purl stitches remaining. And the next decrease I'm going to purl two through the back of the loop and what that means is you enter into the second stitch from the back so I don't know if you can see that there I've got the second stitch followed by the first through the back like so and then I'm going to purl those together so that's a purl two together through the back loop and then I'm ending this purl section by purling one. With the back raglan shaping now complete, carry on working back and forth up to row 12 of the ninth Celtic cable repeat. Join me in part four where we will move on and create the hood shaping